this was in the discussion before, and I forgot to kind of ask you the question, but you said that you wrote this uh, novel, well, not novel, this memoir, in a science fiction way, and I was wondering how that worked. Yeah. And oh, and also, I read. I also read your book when I was in high school, and it has been my dream. Like, I forgot all the other books I read in high school except for your book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. I, you know, I um, I love books. I'm, I, I really, I'm so very rarely bored because I'm always reading. I love books, and I particularly love science fiction books. And for me, it's, it's um, with science fiction, you can't take anything for granted. Not the air you breathe, not the people, not the world. But, and so when I sat down to write my book, I really kept that mentality that Cambodia was such a strange place. And the people um, and, and what happened in Cambodia was a story that few people in the world and few people in America knew about. When I, went, um, when I was in high school, I studied the Vietnam War a little. I don't remember there was mention of what happened in Cambodia in connection to that war. Even when I went to college, there weren't classes taught. And, you, know, you can take Southeast Asia, maybe a little mention of Cambodia, but there wasn't a class I could take. And so to learn about Cambodia, I had to find books on my own. I had to read it on my own, and then I had to try to learn and decipher what I was learning by myself. I approached writing my novel as if it was science fiction because I wanted to build a world that I knew people didn't know about and to make it come to life, to describe the grass, to describe the earth, to describe what it's like not to have shoes, to describe our food in a way that, it, that people would taste it. And, um, and, and so I spent a lot of time working very hard on the descriptions. And, um, and then because it was written in a first person present tense in the voice of a child, taking 90% of it out um, and making the words spoken like a five-year-old kid. Um, so so it, was, it was a lot of a challenge. It was, it was a big challenge. And um, yeah, so it, to me, that was why I did it. Thank you. It was good that you brought that uh, description back up from the earlier discussion. Uh, more questions? Yeah, in the back here. Um, I was curious as to if you know why your brother chose to bring you and if you know what happened to your other siblings. Yes. Um, so the, I, I told, you know, plug my own books. Um, I, I've written three books. The first one is First They Killed My Father. That is, for me, it's a story about what it takes to survive wars. Um, and First They Killed My Father came out, was born on April 15, 1998, when Pol Pot died. I wrote Lucky Child um, when I saw um, President Ben Bush landed his plane on SS Lincoln, speaking to a group of Navy uh, men and women. Behind him was a sign, Mission Accomplished. And as an activist, it was right then that I wanted to write a story of what it takes to survive the peace, long after everybody tells you the war is over. Whether that peace is what you're looking for in your body or in your mind or in the sky. Um, and so I cover that story a lot in that I learned through going back to Cambodia and talking to my family members that a question I didn't ask and was afraid to ask because asking would mean that I would have to deal with the fact that I was chosen and not my sister. And there was a lot of guilt around that, um, surrounding that. And I learned that I was picked because I was the youngest child of the, I was the youngest siblings. And the belief, the family decision and belief was that as the youngest girl, should we ever find a place where there was school, I would have the most number of years to get an education. 